Okay, so the only thing left is this area at the bottom where there's not that much going on, to be honest. There's this barcode, which is actually an, an image that we're just going to place. There's this line here, which is just a line, even though it's a bit thicker and a different color. There's this text box with some text inside it. And again, some special spacing, but nothing we've never done before. And this is not a special kind of line that's thicker on the outside. This is just a black rectangle. And this fits very nicely in the structure here because the black rectangle is exactly the size of this gutter here. Here I made a box unintentionally. And then the quote box is the rest of the five columns and the, co uh, the barcode just aligns in the corner there. And underneath we have just another line of text that's centered. So we're going to quickly do all of this. First of all, let me bring in the barcode. It's the proper size already, so I'm just going to click, place it here, and move it inside the corner. Now, you see, there might you might notice that it's higher quality in the final PDF, and so are the images here, even this one that was very pixelated in our document. This is not because the files are... Uh, low quality. This is because InDesign shows you a lower quality version of the images, so it takes up less processing power, so you work without any difficulties. If your computer can handle it, you can have InDesign show you the full quality images. So I'm going to go to View Display Performance, and here you, by default, you'll set, you'll be set at typical display, but if you switch this to high quality display, even here in the background where there's just a bit of texture, you will see everything change. It's again not that high resolution to begin with, so the improvement is not spectacular. But here at the barcode, you see that first of all you can actually read the numbers, and the same is true for this image here. So if I go back to view display performance and set it back to typical, it's going to be pixelated. If I switch to high quality again, and you might want to learn the shortcuts if you know you're going to use this a lot, it's going to look good again. And you can go even lower if you have really big trouble with large files to fast display, and it's not even going to show you the images. You'll just get a wireframe like this, even if the images are there. So, generally, you should keep it on typical unless your computer has no problems, so you can just switch to high quality. And the text is also affected, but that's not that big of a problem. So, I'm going to leave it to high quality so there's a good uh, preview here, but yeah. That's that's all there is to it. The final output doesn't change. If you export a PDF, it will always be the highest quality that is set up for that particular PDF. Okay, I am now going to draw this black rectangle here. So I'm just going to choose the rectangle tool and come here and fill the space and go here to the top and fill the box with black. And I'm going to make a text box out of the last five columns here, up to the very margin. And I'm going to give this a black outline. Now, right now I can't because the text is active. As soon as you make a text, bo text box, it switches to the text even if there's nothing there. But I can go to the selection tool and that automatically selects the box. Now I can come here and set, give this a one point thickness. And you see I get the same problem again that the, the stroke is aligned to the center. So I'm going to click on this, go to the stroke panel and choose the second option aligned to inside and now it's nice and seamlessly connected there okay 
and I'm just going to drop the text inside here. So select this together with the author name there and just paste this now by mistake i already brought also brought in an empty space an empty line before the text and i don't need the one between the two pieces of text either it's true this doesn't look great at this point but we're going to set it up so all of this text is set in Adobe Garamond Pro Italic and the line between the inverted commas uses a 22 point size and the author name here is 17 points in size and this is also aligned to the right. Now, in addition to all of these, you'll see this is very not okay. The fact that the, li the, the line touches the letters here and it's so close to the letters at the top and on the side here. So uh, we need, if, you, if we look at the reference PDF, you'll see we need some extra spacing both at the top and on the left and right. So we're gonna insert that just like we did previously in these boxes here. Just right click the text box, click text frame options and inset spacing. The values here will be three at the top again, three on the side, on the left, Click here. Um, we don't need extra space at the bottom and six at the right. And you see now it's all nicely arranged with some space to breathe. Um, one last thing we need if we look at the original is a bit of an indent. So the first line here, something that's very common for paragraphs of text where you have more text than this for full articles is this space here. You see it's not the first line and the second line are not aligned. This is called an indent and it's very easy to make. Just very importantly, never, ever, ever, ever use space or tab. To make that because you can't control how much a space or a tab that is in 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 width on the one hand and on the other hand uh because well there are so many technical issues that can show up when you use the space we'll talk about those but it's you you should be much more uh rigorous about that so never use a space or a tab so I'm going to come here. It doesn't matter if we selected the text or not because it applies, it's a setting that applies to the entire paragraph. So we're gonna come up here at the text options again, choose paragraph formatting, and we have this option here. First line, it left indent. You can tell by the icon that it's a paragraph and the first line is where the arrow is pointing is pushed towards the inside and the space that I want there is 12 points. Now you see this says millimeters so if I want one points and this is something that you can do in almost all uh, boxes in InDesign is you can just write whatever unit you want so I'm gonna write 12 PT for points and you see that's going to shift and it's gonna very nicely fit with what we have here. This is exactly 12 points. Now we can also spread this out a bit. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to just set this to justify. And even though in this case, this moves the 
text around and imbalances it a bit. So if we also want to spread it out a bit, so the the last word gets on the next line here, there's another thing that we can do. Um, I'm going to switch back to the character formatting controls. I'm going to select this entire line here. And try to move this around a bit so that it's a bit more visible so just select everything and here we have next to the font options we have this value here the va with the double arrow underneath this is called the tracking we'll tr talk more about it but basically just spreads text out and you can use the up and down arrows to increase or decrease the spacing of text. And I'm just going to increase this. Well, apparently a single click is fine. It changes the value to 10. And this is nicely aligned, just like in the original. A bit more spread out, which is fine when you have larger text. And we're done with this area as well. Just one more thing to go.